Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and also happy new year if I haven't said it already and if this is the first video that you're watching on my channel. Now for today's video I wanted to talk a little bit about reflecting and how to reflect in a way that is constructive and leads you to learn from the experience that you had be it a positive or negative experience and I think this is really important to come here and do at the start of a new year. I've watched a ton of videos about um, you know starting the new year right habits goals um, and what you want to achieve from the year but a lot of it is in vain if you haven't reflected on the year before or on your past experiences on your last week on yesterday if you haven't done that self-reflection to make sure that you actually understand what happened what could have been done better how you could do better next time and actually put in some actionable steps and so in today's video i'm going to be talking about it using an academic framework called the gibbs's reflective cycle and this cycle includes six steps it was developed to help give structure um, of learning from experiences. So it's typically a cycle that you can use if, for example, you need to write a reflective piece at university. This is the exact structure that you would use. And I would also say that it's the exact structure you should use in your personal life as well when you want to reflect on any uh, occurrence or any thing that's happened in your life. Okay, so the first step is description. So for the first step, you want to write down exactly what has happened. So remember here, you're not evaluating, you're not saying why it's happened, you're not saying causes, you're not going into any detail as to the reasoning behind the event, but just to describe what happened. So let's think about this in, maybe we want to just reflect on 2022, and you want to describe what's happened, I would maybe reflect by just saying what happened in January, what happened in February, maybe just writing down the top three things that happened in each month. Or if you're reflecting on a specific event, then just describing what happened in that specific event. And some questions that you might want to ask yourself are things like what happened, when and where did it happen, who was present, what did you and the other people do, what was the outcome of the situation, why were you there, and what did you want to happen. So here you are simply describing. That is the first step. It's really important to describe because it means that you are able to just have like the picture painted, you've gone over it in your head, you've rehashed it and it's there on paper and that is always the first step to then being able to then move on and say how you felt about it. So step number two is feeling. And this is where you actually say how that particular event made you feel. So again, if we're going back to 2022, you said what happened, how did you feel overall in the year? Did you feel accomplished? Did you feel happy? Did you feel sad? Did you feel disappointed? Were you hurt? What was the feeling? You're able to feel multiple feelings as well. So you might say the first half of 2022, I felt really accomplished, I was on a roll. Then the second half was a bit more disappointing or maybe something else. What were your feelings that you felt after relating to that particular occurrence. So remember, when you're reflecting, pick a specific experience that, like I said, it could be reflecting on last year, it could be reflecting on a particular experience you had with a friend or a family member, but just stick to that and then say how you felt about it. So some questions you might want to think about are things like, what were you feeling during the situation? What were you feeling before and after the situation? How do you think the other people were feeling about the situation? And how do you think they feel about it now? Um, what were you thinking during the situation? And how do you feel about the situation now? So this allows you to put into perspective, okay, this has happened and then this is my stance on it. This is how I feel. So you've not invalidated yourself, you're validating your feelings and you're saying, this is how I feel. You also have empathy to show how other people might have felt as well. So you write that down and you say, this is how I think they might have felt or this is how they said they felt if they communicated that to you. But the second bit is all about feelings. The third is evaluating. So now we're starting to get a little bit more critical. And if you think of like higher order learning, 
we started, you know, right at the bottom, we started where we're just describing really basic and now we're getting more and more specific and we're thinking a bit more critically. So when it's evaluating, you're thinking about what went well in the situation, but also what didn't go well. And here you have to be really honest with reflecting. The more honest you are, the more you get out of it. So if you're able to really pick out and say, look, I could have done this better. I didn't do a great job here. It allows you to then later on correct that and give yourself steps and actionable steps to be able to fix it. But if you're not being honest with what's happened, it does make reflecting a bit more uh, a bit more kind of pointless, I suppose, because you're not really getting out of it what you should. Um, so just be really honest with yourself and say what went well and what happened in the situation that allowed it to, you know, go well, if it was a good thing or what didn't go quite well. So let's go back to the reflecting on 2022. You might be like, mm, the first six months went really well because I was waking up early. I had a plan every day. I was time blocking. I did this, I did these things and that's why it went well. However, the second half of the year, I wasn't being financially smart. I wasn't being um, kind to myself. I wasn't doing things like self-care and being really honest with yourself. So now you know those are things that you can target for next time to make things better. So just really reflecting. Some questions you can ask yourself are things like, what was good and bad about the experience? What went well? What didn't go so well? And what did you and other people contribute to the situation? And like I said, either positive or negative. Now, moving up on the pyramid is the fourth thing and that is analysis. Now, analysis is where you are trying to make sense of the situation and where you're trying to actually understand why and give reasoning as to the the, the occurrences for what's happened. So um, again, going back to something quite simple, going back to 2022 and the reflection, you can obviously do this for um, things that are a lot more serious and things that have a lot more meaning, um, but I'm just gonna be doing it on something quite simple for, for the purpose of this video. When I'm thinking of analyzing, I'm thinking of, right, so in the first six months, I was waking up early every day because, you know, I, maybe it's because it was summer, right? The, the sun was out, um, it's not, but let's just say, maybe because it's summer, the sun was out, it made it easier to wake up, I had more motivation, I was being paid more at work, um, I had a really good relationship with my friends and family, and so overall I was, I, you know, I felt good. But then in the second half, I found that maybe I, I, I fell out with a friend and um, I got a pay cut at work and so I wasn't able to spend as much money and I felt like my mental health was, you know, wasn't as great. And you're really analyzing the situation in more depth to understand why you act, acted or why the actions happened. And this is where someone who was writing an academic literature um, and someone, if you're writing, you know, a reflective piece, this is where you kind of put that, those things in. And um, this is where you bring the references in, the citations in to prove why certain events are good and bad. Um, this is where you'd bring that in. So like I said, this is a really academic way of doing it and that's why it actually works. So some questions you might want to ask yourself is, why did things go well? Why didn't it go well? what sense can I make of the situation and what knowledge my own or others um, can help you understand the situation. Here you might want to think more about, you know, approach, theories, literature, um, and just reading more into the science and understanding why uh, you acted that way or why that situation happened. And then penultimate, the fifth one is the conclusion. So you've understood what's gone on and now you want to conclude. And this is kind of wrapping up everything that you've learned um, from your reflection and kind of trying to think about what could be done better next time and giving yourself that sort of like action plan, giving yourself that sort of step to what can actually, what can I do better next time? Ultimately, you want to improve the outcome in the future. And so the conclusion is where you can make that change. And some questions that you might want to ask yourself are, what did I learn from this situation? How could this have been a more positive situation for everyone involved? What skills do I need to develop for me to handle a situation like this better in the future? And what else could I have done? Um, remember that when you're reflecting, you really want to use I. Everything should be first person. So if you're writing this down, you should be saying, I want to be able to do X, Y, and Z. In future, I will do X, Y, and Z. And really using first person to make sure that you are giving yourself that accountability and putting it on you. And then last, but definitely not least, is the sixth point, which is the action plan. There's no point of reflecting if you walk away from it 
with nothing kind of taken away, with nothing learnt. So the sixth point is the action plan. And the action plan is where you have a step-by-step -step sort of guide as to if this situation happened again, what do I do? What do I do to overcome it? What do I do for this to not happen again? Or like I said, if it's positive, to allow this to happen again, what exactly do I do? And some helpful questions for this would be, if I had to do this again, what would I do differently? How would I develop the required skills that I need? How can I make sure that I act differently next time? Um, and, you know, being able to realize that these are things that I need to change. It is enough, but sometimes it isn't quite enough to make sure that you actually do. You need to have a reminder, you need to have actions um, to say to yourself, this is what I need to change and this is how I'm going to change it. So um, I hope this video was helpful in helping you understand how to reflect. Like I said, this is an academic uh, framework that they use up to you know master's PhD level to be able to reflect on um, situations that have happened and to be able to learn. They use this in clinical practice quite a lot um, to be able to learn uh, how to do things better next time um, and change workforces and work and workspaces so it's definitely a, quite a powerful method of being able to reflect using the six steps and um, so if you found this video helpful then let me know if you want to see more like this and like i said hope you have a lovely new year 2023 and i'll see you guys in my next video okay bye